Okay, thanks. So um, where we're here is to 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 say um, there's an added uh, um, application for the Kenyan and South African uh, community where we are going to have um, in-person um, mentorship. So uh, this is um, sort of going to 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 help, uh, uh, and this is just the trial. Uh, and and what we we're trying to to roll out is uh, in collaboration with the Open Seed uh, have uh, mentorship based in Kenya um, to be on bioinformatics and open science, and try to you know uh, strengthen the mentorship uh, program of open uh, life science. Yeah, and we're happy to 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 answer any questions if you have uh, from Kenya and South Africa. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Um, and thank you so much to the LS team, Open Seeds team, Malvika. We all have to practice um, for giving us this opportunity. So what we are doing this time, as Mike was saying, we're collaborating with Open Seeds to provide additional support to people specifically from Kenya and from South Africa. Um, in Kenya, uh, because most of the mentors are in bioinformatics, that's kind of how that came about. In um, South Africa, we are aligning with the Escalator Program, which is a project of the South African Center for Digital Language Resources. And in this case, we are able to provide additional support to people who, who are successful in their OLS applications and have projects that are specific to digital humanities, computational social sciences, anything related to that, who are also affiliated with um, South African universities or research organizations. So that's not to say that someone who is from South Africa or Kenya who doesn't work in bioinformatics or doesn't work in digital computational sciences, um, humanities and social sciences, shouldn't apply, um, or that you will be excluded from from um, being part of the OLS Africa broader group. It's just that we have some additional capability to support specifically um, people in, in the humanities and social sciences in South Africa and in bioinformatics um, in Kenya. So that's just an add on just to make it very clear that everyone, anyone is welcome to apply still. The normal application processes will, um, will be followed. And at the point where people are successful, um, we will look at who is from South Africa, who is from Kenya, and, and work further with those projects to see how we can provide the additional support. I think that's, that covers it. And I think just also, um, I expect from the South African side very much that the type of additional support that will be provided will depend very much on the type of projects that are um, accepted in the OLS program. So it's a bit vague at this stage, um, but we will walk with you along with our Open Seeds program. I, I know, Mike, you've already answered, but it would still help. How will the in-person session run over four months in Kenya and for, for Anelda, you can also iterate in South Africa? Yeah, so at the moment, we are stressing uh, applicants coming from Nairobi because most of the mentors are based in Nairobi. So, um, of course, we will uh, have to participate on all the cohort calls and, and just get a chance to meet your mentor uh, in person uh, at least once a month. So four times in the 16-week period. So there you can get to if there's any challenges uh, while um, attending the court calls or working on the project, you can have more of an interactive uh, session with your mentor to so you just make sure that you complete the program. And in South Africa, um, because we uh, expect that applicants may come from anywhere in South Africa, and we have um, quite a small group of people that has gone through the OLS program before in South Africa. We will play it by ear. And we have, for example, an upcoming conference, the Edge Ignite conference that uh, will take place at the end of August. We've got another one taking place in, um, in November. Um, and we are thinking that perhaps that might be a great place for mentors, mentees to meet up in person, but also for people who are going through the OLS program to share what they are doing, their projects, um, so get more visibility. 
Um, but we we have um, a little bit of funding. We've got a we've got some ideas. We know what it costs to travel around South Africa, so we'll have to really see um, who wh what the successful projects are about, um, where the project members are based, and then um, figure out how we're going to provide the additional in person mentorship um, on top of what OLS provides. Thank you. I'm going to remove the spotlight for now because I, I see some questions and although Paz very kindly is answering to all of them, it would be still useful to um, talk about it. So we have a question around, um, it's my first time, are project science-based? Um, yeah, so answer is no, it doesn't have to be. It, that's why we are now going to open seats and not leaving the life science into the name. You can apply from any um, any context where you think open science practices can be applied. Um, I'll give you an example. We have had in the past someone working in Nepal who applied open science for delivering frugal technology to teachers living in remote village. We had one person who worked with uh, indigenous artists to get them to uh, perform in, in different parts of the country. So, you know, we've had lots of citizen science work as well. We've had humanities related projects, we had law related projects. Um, we are always surprised by the kind of projects we receive. So you don't need to be just science-based. How developed projects need to be? Um, would, I would actually ask that question for Mike and Anelda, and I'll combine that with this other question. Do you consider submission for projects that are part of ongoing MA or PhD studies? Maybe Anelda, you can start. So from the escalator program, we, we really have like anything will work. The most important thing is that if you, because we're working in the open science context, you must have support from your supervisor or um, your department. So um, don't just go rogue with sharing data. Um, and that's also why we encourage people to enroll in, in small teams if, if that's a possibility. Um, anything that is part of a master's, a PhD, but again, just be sure that you have permission to share um, resources that are part of BHG or M. I know um, often supervisors prefer to first publish and then share um, share more broadly. Um, and then um, it, a project can be at the start. So it can be a dream that you have for a project. Um, and in, in the OLS program, you can get help with getting started with that project. Um, that's very, very definitely a way that you can do this. Um, but also if you have a project that have been shelved, maybe because of COVID or whatever, and you wanna re revive a project, that's something that we can do. Um, or if you are ongoing with something, say for example, you want a big push to, um, to move a project forward, to get some momentum. If the project's already um, ongoing, you're more than welcome to submit that. To, and I think, um, Malvika, a, a good idea for people maybe to go and look, and I'm just sharing that now, um, at the projects that have been successful in the past. Um, so there is um, almost 200 projects. You will know how many projects um, that are described, very, very briefly described on the website. Uh, and you can really go and have a look at, at the diversity of projects and stages and everything there. Absolutely. Mike, do you want to add to that? I think maybe you can emphasize on how developed the project needs to be and just the fact that we are working for four months. So uh, yeah, what your advice yeah. would be for an applicant? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, what I like about the program is you don't have to complete the, the your project within the, the month. So if you start, you can always continue, carry on with your mentor. And, and I've, I've seen projects uh, having good relationships with their mentors and keep on, you know, discussing and having meetings even after the graduation. So it's, it's a space where there's not much pressure 
to put yourself in while you're doing, but whatever is achievable within the 14 uh, weeks is always uh, something to present towards the graduation time. Thank you. Um, we think we don't have any question except for the fact that Anilja and um, we have an attendee who reminded that escalator is not yet listed in the open review and that's something we can definitely fix today. Uh, so you can indicate that. I think that would be useful for Mike and Anilda to keep a track of who is applying for OLS Africa scheme and uh, make sure that they connect with you directly. Okay, um, folks, if you have some more question that you would like to ask in the chat, please do. And as usually, I'll go back and turn off the recording. So if you feel like turning on your video and uh, talk to us and ask us about this specific project that you're trying to bring, any advice you want from us, we are really your cheerleaders here. We really want you to do a brilliant job in sending application, making it easy for us to identify mentors and make sure that reviewers, so because we generally would not review the application, our applications would be reviewed by mentors. You can see us as your personal coach, if you would, if you will. Okay, any more questions? Oh, um, yeah, please, please ask us a letter. <laughs> 